Hello and welcome to the Midlife Gamer Podcast. Today is Wednesday, the 13th of February 2019, and my name is Darren Baldock. Joining me at the other end of the interview is Mr. Matthew Moore. Hello, Matthew. Hello, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. I know it's been a while. It's been a while. And some of you may be wondering, where's all the fun and frivolity and the hey and all that hoo-ha that we normally do? Well, uh, this is uh, this this is this is a, a strange show. Um because we, we, we lost a brother. We, we lost a brother over the Christmas period. And um, we, we just wanted to talk about that briefly before we get stuck into the show properly. So for those of you who, who knew him, um, Trevor Phillips was a, he was a, he, he was a legendary guy. Um, he was the kind of guy who had a, he, he left, he left you with something. Whenever, when if whoever met him was left with with a with a memory of of, of Trevor, and he was um, he was a he was a straight talking guy, and um, I miss him. <laughs> I, I do. I miss him. I, I miss him. I miss him a hell of a lot, and um, it was really sad. Uh, he passed away on Christmas Day. Uh, he survived by his um, by his rock Tess. And uh, he was, I always remember about Trevor, he always, he always, he was, he was totally devoted to her and he always, he said, she's my rock, she she keeps me sane. And I thought, Jesus Christ, that's a hell of a woman. It is. Because if anyone can wrangle Trevor, <laughs> then it would be Tess. I don't think anybody else could. I don't know if anybody listened to the uh, Year of Shame podcast from 2017. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, I, and, and I think that's one of the things I like about podcasts is it, 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 there's like a permanent record somewhere out there in the world of people enjoying life and being passionate about the things that they do. Do you know what? I hadn't quite considered that, but that's a good point. That's a real good point. I'm going to have to go and check that out. Do you know what? From... I really didn't like it. It was really peculiar. I rolled over it. So you what, Boxing Day, rolled over, looked at my phone, turned to the wife, and it, generally it's like, oh, guess who's died? Instead it was, oh, shit, um, Trevor's dead. And I, I got up and made a coffee and I had a fag and I sat there and it all started to sink in. And, got, and I got incredibly emotional, incredibly emotional when everyone sort of started to realise. And I guess it made me it made me think of that whole mortality thing. And guess what? I've just turned 40 as well, so it's, it's I guess it's fitting. It really did make me think that, do you know what? I what, what, I think a lot of us went down to a pub and somehow got our hands on some Guinness. Yes. And I, I did that. I went down to my local and a, a buddy of mine was there. And I thought, do you know what? I'm going to go and have a Guinness with you and just hug you a little bit harder than usual today. Mm. No, and I, and, and, and I think I could, I could see myself making that kind of just an annual thing on Christmas Day. We'll get a, we'll get a bottle of Guinness, pour one out, pour one out for Trevor. Um wherever he is now i know he's he's giving somebody shit in the most loving way and he's probably drinking them under the table um thinking he's probably he's probably facing off against the likes of george best and winning like hands down and uh, god just nobody ever talked to him about fallout or or anything because they won't they won't be able to stop him but bless him he was he was a very passionate guy passionate about the things that he loved, and he loved the things he was passionate about, and uh, he loved the midlife gamer community, and we certainly, we certainly loved him. And I know that, you know, looking at the outpouring on, uh, you know, within social media, uh, in his circle of friends, you know, he's, uh, he's he's a guy that will be sorely missed and long remembered. Oh yeah, I think I found uh, I found a video on my phone of of him and Tess dancing a, a couple of years ago when she came to one of our gigs, and she, she'd probably never seen it before. I was like, holy shit, look what I found. <laughs> I'm going to share something with you now that I've, I've not I've not shared with anybody. So, um, I I was go- I think there was there was a period, obviously well documented, where I I wasn't in the best of places from a mental health perspective, and uh, we exchanged numbers at uh, one of the MLGXs, and uh, and and he always threatened. He says, "I'm going to ring you." And I remember one day, one evening, he rang me out of the blue, and we we must have chatted for a good hour. Uh, it was just me and him, and he was um, he was his, his usual Trevor self. He goes, how are you feeling? I said, I feel okay. He says, bullshit, you're deflecting. <laughs> 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 and there was this constant <laughs> tirade of, this is not how it works. This is da-da-da-da-da. Clearly, the guy has, has experience, has had experience of 
of of similar issues. Um, but it was a it was a really good, a really really good conversation. I found it really, I don't know, it kind of made me look at things in a different way. Well, if someone's but I, ne- getting... but I never shared that. I've never shared that. Yeah. That was my that was my per- my personal time with Trevor. <laughs> so um, but there you go. It's uh, it's it's a sad time, and um, he, I don't think he'd want us to dwell on it too much. I think he'd want us to go and get drunk and um, and 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 tell tales of him. I'm sure there's plenty of stories out there because <laughs> obviously you and I weren't. Um, I'd, I guess attached to him permanently during uh, our social events, but I hear the stories. I hear the stories, and they're always good, and they're always told with a smile on people's faces, <laughs> you know. But that's but that's what he was all about. He was he was a genuine guy. He was down to earth. He spoke his mind, um, but he 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 lived and loved passionately in in whatever he did. So so there you go. Let's <sighs> let's uh, let's get on with the show. Let's my do friend because we've got loads to talk about i'm guessing because we, we we've had we've had christmas we've had a new year we've had birthday parties we've probably had some random purchases of uh, various things i'm looking at you matthew yeah, okay I, I, i'm not in a year of shame i can do what i want yeah <laughs> um okay where do you want to begin um, well, did you have a nice Christmas? All that good stuff. Yeah, I did. It was really nice. I really nice. Me and, me and the good lady, uh, we, we kind of uh, knuckled down and, uh, and 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 we just we just it was just the two of us. It, it was it was amazing and uh, such such a nice time. Um, don't ask me what I got because um, I can't remember a lot of it. I, I I asked for a lot of little things, little little things that I I wanted. Um, things like the it ain't half hot mum DVD box set. Now, obviously, I got this prior to uh, to, to to me losing um, uh, Windsor Davis, which is uh, another another sad loss. Um, but it's all relative, isn't it? Um, what about you? What did you do? what did you get up to? Oh, it was a it was a big family affair. I uh, I did the cooking for what do we have? Eight eight adults, two children, four dogs, and yes, the dogs did get some Christmas dinner because they're part of the family. That's the law. And yeah, I don't know what I got. I uh, I always ask for socks. I've got loads of socks. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> Do you ever want to be in a position where you have so many socks that you could just wear wear a pair and throw them away every day? I've I've contemplated that. I don't know if that's a business model that's worth pursuing. But I've often, mm. if it was cost effective, fuck yeah. I think I think if you if you get stupid crazy rich, I mean you can't imagine like the likes of David Beckham, like recycling his socks because Posh ain't going to be washing shit, is she? She don't. She don't wash. She don't wash nothing, <laughs> apart from maybe a uh, a hoo ha. Hoo ha? Because who wouldn't? Um, <laughs> if I had a hoo ha, I'd forever be washing it. I know, mate. Yeah, with <laughs> with with a scrubbing brush, with a with a Brillo pad. <laughs> oh, we're right down there. Uh, okay, socks. Socks are done. Smellies? Did you get smellies? Got some smellies. Got yeah. them and consumed them all. Got your, your Lynx Africa gift set, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Standard. Hmm. Beautiful stuff. And New Year it was all seen in well and safely? I think I, I was in bed. We were in bed at half ten. I set my alarm for quarter to twelve. It went off and I thought, fuck it. Yeah, that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> yes, getting old, mate. You're getting old. Yeah, zero fucks were given at watching fireworks on the telly. <laughs> oh, talking to tellies, I bought I bought a new telly. <laughs> I did. I bought a new telly. Well, what, one of the things I did, and um, I think it was prompted somewhat by uh, the stuff that happened over Christmas, but also I've been mulling over this for a while, and I'm a terrible pr- procrastinator. Um, you know, my good lady, she gives me shit about it all the time. Uh, but if, if you remember, I've got this. I've got like this. TV um, unit in my in my board game room. Let's call it the dining room, and it's got an old uh, Panasonic plasma screen, and it's got an AV amp underneath, and all the speakers and everything. And it's hefty, it's hefty as fuck, dude. Sixty kilos that TV weighs because it, it was it was a professional it was a, prof- a professional panel. So, oh my god, these are the things they used to put up in shops. And I don't even want to tell you how much that thing cost me when I bought it. But I'll tell you what I did. And I wasn't aware you could do this until recently. 
but I rang the local, uh, well, actually went on the website of the British Heart Foundation. And you can request, or you can have people come and collect stuff from you. So, you know, we all take, you know, jigsaws and old clothes and stuff and give them to, to the charity shop. But if you've got big bulky stuff that you want shot of, and it's of resellable value, then give 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 the British Art Foundation a call. The Lorraine, the van, van came round. Two guys came in. Tell it, you tell them in advance what you're giving them, and uh, and yeah, they were in out in ten minutes. So I uh, yeah, so I got rid of all that stuff to, for, I thought, for a good there cause. Were, there's a slot there that needs filling. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you know what you're thinking. I know what listeners are thinking. He's gone and bought some more fucking Calax, hasn't he? Well, no, I didn't. I relocated some of my existing Calax and helped it serve up as almost like a counter for my new my new television. Now, this is what I, I think. This is what happens when you get older. I was always I was always amazed at old people that they that they're not they're not as fussed about the latest tech as we are, right? But I'm starting to verge into that area. So I, I was looking for a telly, and I don't I don't watch a lot of television. I think that's widely documented. So I, thought, I just want something that's not too big. It's not going to over overpower the room. I'm not asked about 4K or all that business. Maybe five or ten years ago, yeah, I'd have all the late been up in the latest shit. But now I just got a 1080p HD TV, uh, 32 inches, Toshiba, great picture, and I can control it with my with my uh, my Amazon Echo. So yeah. Because I'm I'm such an Amazon wanker. Yeah, there's synergy now in the Bulldog household. Yeah, there is. I'm in I'm in the eco. Well, I've been in the ecosystem for some time, being a being a Prime member, but you know, just, just incrementally, just getting deeper and deeper into it. So th- further to that, then I ended up buying a, a Fire Stick TV, which is really cool. I've had a couple. Yeah, uh, because while this new TV is a smart TV, uh, it doesn't have uh, Amazon Prime Video. So, boom, I, I need I needed to to address that. Plus, what I love about this uh, this Fire Stick, and again, I'm probably preaching to the choir here because these things have been knocking around for a while. But there's a new version just come out. I don't know how it's different from the rest. I know you can buy a 4K version. I didn't need that because I don't have a 4K TV. So I just got the standard one, and it's fine. I understand science can be done to do scientific stuff to watch lots of things that you probably shouldn't. I ain't bothered with none of that. I just want. I just want to be able to watch all my fun stuff, be able to watch Twitch, etc., etc., and also I can take it with me. So your your content goes with you wherever you go. To give you an example, um, me and a good lady, uh, I I went up to Lincoln at the weekend to uh, uh, just 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 to see her. She was visiting uh, family up there. She had some business to take care of, and I had I was at a loose end. I said, hey, why don't I come up and spend the night with you? Because she'd already she'd booked a hotel etc because she was staying overnight so, hey okay brucey bonus so i took my fire stick there you go plugged it into the hotel room tv awesome got all the content i wanted my netflix my amazon prime blah 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 yeah i stuck twitch on started watching some magic <laughs> oh that's just like oh thank you for the uh, the lovely gesture darren and coming so far but what a fuck off <laughs> hey i bought i bought bloody prosecco as well and posh glasses so All kiss right. my kiss my balls. That's right. that's boyfin. That's boyfin done right. That is. <laughs> she'd tell you if she was here. She'd tell you. It's good boyfin. Anyway, um, yeah. So a couple of uh, a couple of purchases on my part that have uh, improved my life a little bit. What about you? Um, well, I purchased. Mm. I went and I purchased. Uh, I am I am currently rocking a master race man. That's what I am. Don't you know, Matthew? Tell me what you know about being part of the master race as a as a as a brand new PC owner. Well, Windows Ten's fine. It's absolutely fine. It, well, it probably is now. It wasn't when it first came out. That's why I'm not? still rocking seven. Oh right. Well, this is the first time I've had a PC, my own PC, for about fifteen years, um, and I've not built one for a good twenty years or so. And the, the 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 MacBook that I've I've had now, and I do all the editing on, we record on, and I I do shit on, 
it's old and it's it's built in with the with the Apple legacy bullshit where it's going to kill itself because it wants me to upgrade. I mean, right now, the half of the space bar works and the right arrow doesn't. Okay, <laughs> like it, it was on it. Like, it was like the, the the Blues Brothers car at the end. So I've been I've been thinking about getting a PC for a while, and thankfully, uh, we've got a mutual friend who's really good at putting together a, a build. Uh, and I hit him up and, and bless him. It's uh, it was Matt Jones. He had time for me. We spoke and then I had I had money burning a hole. Right. And also I knew this laptop was going, so I just started I started pestering. I was like firing him. Link is that any good? Is that any good? And what he did. And this is a good place to start. If you're thinking, okay, what would I go and buy? What is your budget? Mm. Go, I, I looked all around. I thought, right, something like that. Not PC World. Some specialists that they do buy now stuff on, yeah. on eBay or something. And what? So and all he did was he went to this website, which is called PCPartPicker.com. And okay. you you tell it you want uh, this CPU, uh, this motherboard, this case, this graphics card, this memory, all this sort of good stuff. And it will do just two things. Firstly, it will flag up any incompatibility issues, which was a good. Which is, you need that. I need that. I don't know. Um, and secondly, it picks the best price for each of those items in a in a live way, and you can track the price okay. of things. So he we he sort of built it up. I went brilliant. I'm buying it. He went whoa whoa whoa. All your horses there, fellow. All your horses. <laughs> that was me me doing the comparison build to see how much of a difference there was in a saving. I was like, oh okay okay. Because bear in mind, I've got to get everything: the computer, the speakers, the web camera, the monitor, the mouse, the keyboard. Um, which is why I thought a bundle. So I so I, what I ordered in the end was. Do, shall I tell you? Shall I tell you what I've got? Tell you what I'm wrong. Yeah, come on. All right, here we go. So I have got. Uh, 16 gig of it says DDR5 RAM. Didn't know that existed. Um, it's an AMD motherboard with an AMD Ryzen 5 2600 six core processor. Um, the graphics card is a, a Radeon RX 590 Fat Boy, okay. a, a Wide Boy, one or two. It's fucking massive. Um, <laughs> and it's an, that's an eight gig card. Um, and I think from a disc point of view, I've got a solid state of two uh, two fifty solid state and a. Uh, a two terabyte um, mechanical, and um, and yeah, it all it all turned up, and there's all these boxes everywhere, and and I was just thinking, I've got to I've got to do this, I've got to do this now. And on mm. Friday night, I thought it's happening, it's happening. Yeah. I I did a lot of research on um, on building PCs on YouTube. It's absolutely a friend, and I found a guy that was like an hour long video, and he's like, look, you can do it with me, but I mean, feel free to fucking mm. pause it because, and I would I would sort of follow that to to the T. But it, I don't know, every now and again, I'd sort of stop and go. Hang on a minute. Mine's obviously a little bit different to what he's got. Thankfully, again, YouTube or Google, I type things in. I mean, I need, I wanted to know what do I want to know? Okay, so if there's four, if there's four slots for my uh, RAM, mm. I'm pretty sure there's two which are pr- uh, the primary ones. Maybe, yeah. So, uh, so sounds I go- right. <laughs> so I googled it, and sure enough, there was. And then when I looked closer on the motherboard itself, it actually did tell you the motherboard does hold an awful lot of like useful information. Mm. And um, and yeah, I got I, was, I started up on this build. The hardest thing that I had was taking the side panel off. I was convinced it was going to just smash, or I w- wasn't doing something right. Uh, turns out you just do need brute force, All right, to get it off. Um, the case itself, it's got it's got it's got a glass side screen. I've never had one of them before. It's a thing of fucking beauty. It's got little strips of light. It's not inside on the outside. It's quite elegant. I like it. Mm-hmm. Um, I am tempted to go in there again and do a bit of cable management because it's doing me head in. I was going to I was going to ask you at some point how was your cable management because it's one of those things where if you're going to do it you just need to do it straight from the off because once it's all in and up and running you kind of go oh fuck it I'm well, playing games now well when did you last build a computer I didn't okay I've, well I've never built a computer well you, the, these these cases already come with the majority of the cabling all done. Oh, re- it's really smart. Like the entire front of this panel was already plumbed in for your, like your buttons, your reset buttons, your USB threes, your USB twos. There's a button there that changes all the fucking colours. Don't know how it works, but I keep pressing it. Uh, so it does a lot of that for you. And I got it finished. It probably took me about three hours. Mm. And I was like, oh, I've got to test this bad boy. So I've got a cheap. Like, it is quite a cheap monitor. It's only one. It's a Dell, twenty-one inch maybe. So I plugged it in in the kitchen. I was like, fuck, here we go. I've not. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Mm-hmm. Click <laughs> like a dream. Fired up like a dream. Oh, it's it was it was glorious. And I, I'm looking back now at the process. And this is what I had in my head. I thought, if I build it myself, maybe I'll appreciate what the computer does. 
and it will it, obviously it will teach me an awful lot and it means that when if something does go wrong or i want to upgrade it i'm gonna have a lot of confidence that i know what i'm going back into i'm going back to my own shit essentially yeah um and, and just that from a from a mind point of view i think i put it i was i mean i was posting pictures of it on facebook as i was getting drunker and drunker um and i think at the very end when i got it all working i i sort of implored someone that if you've got if, if you fancy it give it a go it's not it, mm. it's so much easier than it ever was everything is like, so there's a solid state drive in there it's it's just mounted to a, a bracket in the case ready for you and it happens yeah. to be sat exactly where the power trails are going to go mm-hmm. just super super quality of life things uh the the next big struggle i had was getting an operating system on there i needed to get windows so you can make a bootable uh usb windows installation uh turns out that's a really hard work when you've only got a fucking mac to play with <laughs> Yeah, I, see, I did see your uh, social media outreach. Hi, anybody? Anybody in Farrington can do, do this for me? I thought, yeah, it'll be fine. It'll yeah. be fine. Well, they, um, I went to PC World. I thought, fuck it, I'm buying a copy of Windows 10 because I ain't got a key anyway. I know you can get these ones for 20 quid, the, the old corporate license ones when they have an enterprise license, and it's mm. it ain't legit, and at some point it will get fucking turned off. And I want to yeah. be legit with this. Do you know what I mean? Of course you do, yeah. a, bit, a bit of a pride and joy thing now. So the installation went like a breeze. And while I was there as well, I picked up some um, some speakers, dead cheap speakers. I realized they are cheap. £9.99 for speakers ain't good. So mm. I probably will get some more, even though I've got the cans, of course. Um, so the end, yeah, I, so I got back. I was like, straight in with the USB stick. Windows is installing. We're fucking rolling. It's straight going straight onto the um, solid state drive because, yeah, that's what solid state drives are for. Yeah. And it's like, right, let's we start updating this bad boy. I'm like, yeah, because I, I watched another video, which is like the three things that you do when you start the, the software part of it. So he, he would yeah. tell me about all the things you want to turn off, reminding me to go and turn on file extensions for known files, because I want to see if it's an executable. Yeah. Um, all that sort of stuff that I remember from from previous Windows, and which I, I used to rely on. Um, and it went, oh, we can't, we can't find your router. I'm like, Oh, I'm so used to laptops having built-in Wi-Fi. I just assumed this big box here would somehow have magical Wi-Fi in it. Okay. And it's on Sunday. No, it's not. So back at PC World again. To get a, <laughs> to get a, I was tempted to go the, 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 the power line route. Yeah. But we've had electrical issues in this house, so I'd rather not risk it. But no, that that works. Everything's installed. I've got Steam installed. I've got some work. I've got Office 365. Um, so I've got all the... All the, all the good stuff I got. What did I get? What did I lock into the day? Discord. I got. I don't know what. I know what it is, and I don't. Know, I don't know if I'll ever use it, but it's there. <laughs> okay. Um. But the best thing for me now is that we are recording. There's no. There's no delays like we were used to. It wasn't my internet. It was actually just the system keeping up with itself. I've got other things open, and I'm not concerned that it's going to break at any point. And that yeah. reliability is exactly what I needed from a productive point of view with them i can use it when i'm working as well doing this and of course playing video games on it well this is going to be my question what was so aside from uh oh sorry before we get into that ha, have you tried solitaire no no because that's yeah. your measure that's your measure of if pc is any good or not oh i know i'll tell you what the measure was i did i, I timed it this afternoon um I, I found some really cool windows 10 things like there's some really fancy ways of deciding what starts up on startup mm-hmm. compared to what it, how it used to be done. So I've got it down to, uh, from a hard off, all the fans turned off, to hitting power, to being in my system with uh, a browser open is 20 seconds. That's pretty decent. It feels good. It feels good. Yeah. I know this isn't this isn't the biggest build in the world. It's not the best mm-hmm. thing in the world. I can see that like right now I'm using 36% of my, of my graphics card. I think the fans have sp- span up on it once. When I thought mm-hmm. I should really try putting this through its bloody paces, really, shouldn't I? So, so you're right. The first thing that I did is I I, I downloaded Steam. I was like, oh shit, I've got a couple of things there, haven't I? All right. And uh, I was like, oh, there's FTL. Oh, I miss FTL. <laughs> Let's go and have a couple of hours of FTL. Yeah, why not? Why not? Uh, but I I, I did um um. I was like, what's that thing that Microsoft does? That, like, I'm sure you can play Xbox games on it, and it's the the, the games with gold pass uh for the pc i think it's like a 7.99 subscription i've got a 14 day trial future me won't cancel that and will pay for it yes, but it does will. mean it does mean that all those first part of microsoft titles i'll be able to play and in theory should be able to play them relatively well on this machine 
Um, so as a test, I grabbed uh, Forza Horizon 4. Nice, okay. Like, why not? This is, this is, and I I booted up and it was just full screen straight away. And I mean, it, and it looked, I mean, it looked as good as my PlayStation 4 looks downstairs. Well, yeah, because your PlayStation 4 is just a PC that can never be upgraded. Right. <laughs> this is true. But what I did realize is I do need to get a, uh, a controller solution because I was, I was wazdying it. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, you fool. <laughs> Let me just get a, Have you got an old wired 360 controller lying around anywhere? I've got a wired 360 courtesy of Brother Brown, if you remember. Yeah, well, use that. I will. I'll make yeah. use of that. Jolly good, mate. So, okay. So, Force Horizon 4. Anything else? Uh, no, no. Okay. No, so, that's it. so, 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 if you got anything you got your eye on right now, what, what's going to be your next, your next jam? Well, I. Um... Well, because one, did... one of the things, one of the things you're going to start to appreciate pretty quickly is there's a there's a price differential. So instead of paying your lazy man's tax on the PS4, you're going to be paying the Master Race uh, rebate <laughs> <laughs> by uh, by keeping an eye. I mean, Steam have always got sales on. Oh God, God help you, your first Steam sale. Oh, it's going to be glorious. Well, well, I won't have any of the games, and that's always that's always a good thing. No, uh, no, and there's always there's always stuff on a special. Every time you boot Steam up, it pops up a window going, "Oh, this is free this weekend to play," or "This is cheap." Blah 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 blah. Mm. So I'll be, very, I'll be very interested to see what uh, what kind of path you take on your journey into the uh, into the master race gaming space. Yep, yep, and I've, I've, there's also a lot of PC exclusives that I missed out on. I mean, I've got uh, a buddy of mine gifted me Civ Five. All right. and I know that six is out, but I ain't played Civ since three, so fuck it, I'm gonna have a go at that. Right then, so if um, because you can you can gift stuff as well on uh, on Steam, this is a chance, and he ain't gonna get his tits out, boys and girls. He he doesn't do games for boobs. Um, if uh, if if somebody had a spare copy of something lying around in their Steam library, uh, and they wanted to gift it to you, what's your how how do they get hold of you, Steam wise? I think. <laughs> Is it Mantis Matt? It's Come Mantis on. Matt. It's Mantis Matt one two three. Oh right, yeah, that one, that one. Okay, Mantis Matt one two three. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna build a wish list as well, mate. <gasps> yeah. Is that where it gives you notifications where it says it's on, it's on sale? It certainly does, brother. All the all that good sexy gaming discount. It's all it's all up in your ass now. No, that's good stuff, mate. That's good stuff. Yeah, you clearly are, you you need to address your your controller. It sounds like you're all over that. You need to get some better speakers. Uh, at some point, you I know you you'll probably go dual monitor, which is which is only right and only fair. But for the time being, you've only got you've only got one screen to look at, and that's all. That's I, I survived on that for years, even when I had two screens. Hmm. And mm-hmm. I, you know, <laughs> um. No, oh, good stuff. So if you if you went if you went back and did it all again, would would you change anything? I know you because you're pretty you're pretty fresh from the process. What 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 would you be your advice to anybody who was thinking of doing something similar? Because to be because I'll be honest with you, mate. I've I've always been of the mind, no, nah, mate. That's that's bullshit. I'll I'll leave it to a professional to do it. But you know, and no, no, <laughs> nothing against you, buddy. But if you can do it. Then anyone could do it. Well, I think that's 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 the that's the take home from this conversation, isn't it? Mm. I don't know if there is anything I would uh, I'd do differently. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I'd have invested in in something else. Maybe I'd have got a better a, a bigger fan for my for my CPU. But I don't know. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. What I do know is that it's going to be incredibly easy for me to to change that in the future. And I'd like to think that I don't need to. The only the only downside I will say of using that PC part picker is that out of my sort of like core nine components they all came from different retailers mm. so if i've got some warranty issues um that'll be interesting it will well i'm sure you you'll have kept track of who what was bought from who and where and and how much you paid and all the receipts etc because i know you're, you're switched on kind of guy in that side but hey fuck that shit Master Race. Da, 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 da. <laughs> oh, Master Race. Matthew's got a PC and it's all fucking good. 
Oh, it is nice. Brilliant stuff. So have you installed Magic Arena yet? No, I've not got okay, that far yet. Okay, you sort that out, yeah. Mm. And then you need to grab Eternal from uh, from the Steam Store. It's free to play, my friend. Oh, Steam Store. I've got Steam Store. Any of the stores need to get? Uh, Epic Games? Yeah, they've all, they've all got their own stores now. Ubisoft, Epic, Blizzard, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. EA, that's Origin. Yeah, so, uh, oh, you've probably still got Peggle bought somewhere, <gasps> haven't you? If I haven't. No, is, you it on, will. is it on Steam? No, it's on Origin. It's on Origin, mate. All right, Peggle it is then. Mm. Good stuff. So what else, what else have you been playing, buddy? Um, so the rest of my time has been really just spent on the PlayStation. I, um, uh, I've i not really gone back to Red Dead. I don't think I need to. I don't think I will again. Um, I don't know what's going to happen with the online. Time will tell. Uh, I'll always have it. I probably will delete it off the hard drive because it's a, it's a working big size. Mm-hmm. Uh, but can come back in the future if I see um, members of the community actively enjoy it. I'll go, I'll go and play with them again. I did give the campaign one last kind of jump into just to, just for shits and giggles, and I thought I'll take it slow and I'll. I, d- I did something you can do in that game where you, you can the, the hood is incredibly customizable, so I turn the map off. Turn the map off. Let's just fucking enjoy ourselves for a bit. Yeah, baby. Um, and I went into this guy. I went into a house. I thought, oh, there's no one here. There's no one here. I'll go in and just, I'll, I'll nick stuff. I'll nick. I'm a cowboy. It's what I do. I'm a bastard. <laughs> and I wondered. I'm like, oh yeah, coffee beans. Mmm. Oh, what's that? Salt. Fucking mmm. All mine. You have none of it. <laughs> what's this? Money purse. Fucking money purse. Oh, no, no. Sorry, Matthew. You are, you're you holding too many money purses. But knock yourself out with fucking apples over there. I was like, oh, fuck you, video game. <laughs> fuck you, video game. Oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> so, so I ended up going out. I thought, you know what? I'm just going to be a dickhead for a bit. So I thought, um, I don't know, there was a wagon rolling, and I thought, I've never actually tried hijacking one of these as they're going in. It turned into a shootout, and they got killed. And I thought, well, there's no point looting all these people, because they've got a, 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 a tenth of a percent of my actual salary, and, and the animation protocol would take forever. I thought, I'll just go in the back, and I'll bet there's something that would be like, oh, maybe there'll be like a, a woman tied up I can rescue, or there will be bonds for something, or a clue, or a treasure map went in there, and it was just... It was just food, wasn't it? It was food for the farmers. It was it was grain for the cattle. And I just felt like the worst fucking person in the world. But hey, you're a cowboy. Hey. You do cowboy stuff. Oh, mate. I tell you, I've, I, feel like I've, I feel like I've missed the boat. I feel like I've missed the boat with Red Dead. You know? It's interesting how... It's interesting how my approach to video games has changed over the years. And for those, obviously, people who've listened know that, uh, that yeah, Darren kind of just picks one thing and kind of lasers in on that and sticks with it for uh, for as long as he can. But I, I've not I've not turned my consoles on in such a long time to play a video game, and I don't feel any any compulsion to do that. I mean, my gaming, my my video gaming is. Is uh, has, has changed fundamentally since when we first started recording. You know, I used to be all about all about the console games, and of late, um, I've been, and I, and I think it's just down to to to, to lifestyle changes. Um, you know, particularly in light of what's happened over the last the, the last few months, um, my 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 approach to life has changed uh, a fair bit. I think I think the medication helps as well. I'm kind of just chill. I'm chilled out now, mate. I'm chilled out. Um, I I don't I don't always have to sort of seek seek solace or um, a, a sense of escapism uh, in the world that I used to throw throw myself into. Um, but I, I still I still crave that that entertainment. I, I like I like to have my you know my synapses firing and you know things to things to challenge me, you know. So I'm playing a lot of. Um, I know we spoke about it on the last show. Uh, I've been playing a lot of uh, Eternal, um, and I'm really, I'm really digging that game. I really am digging it. It's continuing to, to, to engage me, and I think primarily because it's a game that I can play in bed. It's kind of like my last half hour of the evening. I know, right? I'm going to have half hour. I'm going to have a couple of, a couple of matches on Eternal because you know I'm running it on my Chromebook and. It's it's fine. It's great. All is great in the world. Hey, they, you know, and, and I talked about how free and easy they are with giving you content all the time. Um, so what I forgot to mention on the last show 
is that they do a really cool thing with Twitch. So um, as a as a um, as a viewer of a eternal stream on Twitch. So you get all the funky stuff that Magic Arena does so you can hover over cards and it tells you what it does etc cetera, etc. Cetera. I think that's that's a common going to be a common thing right now. Uh but more importantly, you when you when you sign up for your eternal account, you can li- link it to your Twitch ID. So what it does is they kind of talk to each other and they've got this thing set up where it knows when you're watching an eternal stream and you earn rewards just for watching content. So when you go back into the game and boot up, it'll say, right, claim your Twitch, Twitch rewards, blah, 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 blah. And while you're watching Twitch, it uh, uh, depends on the platform you're viewing it on. If you're viewing it on a desktop, I know it'll definitely happen. But if you're watching it on mobile or, say, for example, through my Amazon uh, Fire Stick, it doesn't do this. But little chests, reward chests, will appear on the screen. And if you click on them, you get a little more in the way of reward than you would from just passively watching it. Because, hey, guess what? There's nothing stopping somebody just... And in somebody, I mean me. Uh, you know, I, <laughs> so I'm working from home. Uh, and I will I will turn on my fire stick. When I get up in the morning, I'll log on to my, my work computer. I'll turn on my TV. I'll switch on... <laughs> I'll, sw- I'll turn on Twitch. I'll just go to the channel that's got the most views, uh, the most people watching it, because normally they've got something good going on. And uh, I'll just leave that running on mute. <laughs> and then when I log into it later, I'll go, hey, you got some Twitch rewards. I'll say, okay, that's cool, because I've been watching it all day. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> kind of. Um, but they've, they've just this week, um, they've introduced some some vast community program now. So for content creators and streamers, uh, they the, the currency I don't know, I can't remember what it's called, bits or something like that. They can use their bits that they've accrued through people watching their stream to. Um, I guess activate a campaign so they have different tiers of campaign it's like bronze silver gold platinum and the higher the value of the campaign means that the rewards are greater for the viewers so it's kind of like a circle of everybody does well out of this because direwolf are doing well because they've got people viewing the content and you know getting into the game you've got streamers that are getting loads of viewers and loads of subscribers because they've got a you know a gold or a, or a platinum session going on and the people watching it are doing better because they're getting greater rewards so i'm getting you know I, I i opened some rewards the other day and i'd got like a bunch of packs of cards uh i'm getting loads of uh, premium cards as well so the premium cards are the kind of animated and they're all sparkly and shiny so i guess it's the magic equivalent of foil cards um, so no, that's re- it's really interesting. It's a, it's a really interesting ecosystem where everyone appears to get something out of it, you know, while enjoying the game, promoting the game, selling the game, you know, everybody wins, and I think it's great. I think it's great. I've um, I've got I ain't got much excuse to give some digital CCGs a chance, really. Eh? Mm. I've got a desktop, I can do that. Yeah, you could. Good. Yeah, yeah. If, if you get so, if you go into the show notes for the last show, you'll see a little referral link there, mate. So when you set up your account, work your way through those uh, tutorial missions, get yourself a nice, sweet deck at the end. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hooking a brother up. Bit of something for me, bit of yeah. something for you. Yeah, and that applies for everybody. Anybody who's listening, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spam these these show notes with the same link. Just go with the last show. Check it out. Mm. Bad sales. Good shit. Good shit. What else? Anything else? Come on. I, no, I know. I know you're getting a bit gay for Persona Five. I am. That's a good thing. Yeah, it's totally good, mate. I've had for some reason. I've never played a Persona for game, but I've often seen Persona Five on the PlayStation Network digital purchase download gig, and I've all, and I've always hovered over it and thought, is it time that I do something a bit different? Cleanse my palate with some of the with, with the, most, the most different thing I've played in a long time. And I sort of about 20 quid. I went, fuck yeah, that's my price. 20 quid. That's a good price. And uh, and, and this, I guess, I guess I don't have much of a history with JRPGs, uh, particularly turn-based JRPGs. I, uh, Christ, I enjoyed, I enjoyed Final Fantasy X. And I do, en- I do enjoy turn-based combat, particularly when it's quite simple, such as, I don't know, attack, spell, item, defend. 
there's there's something really mm. enjoyable about that because there's always then loot and skills yeah. and levels to go with it. Yeah, I mean, probably without you realising it, the pl- closest thing you've been to a JRPG in years is probably South Park's Dick of Truth. Yeah, just just through that turn based combat and the you know wandering around the overworld, but obviously fun and fart and knob gags. Yes, true, true, true. Uh, now, as well as this being a JRPG, it's anime as fuck. And I'm not much of an anime <laughs> kind of guy, but I um, it's it's got its hooks into me from a stylistic and artistic point of view in the opening set segments. Mm. It's it's just it's, it's a it's an assault on all of the senses that are going on, and it's obviously a series that's got a very loyal fan base. Everything yes. I I didn't like I say I've not seen any of the previous ones or played them. I kind of know some of its. I don't know. I think I think I think I'd, I must have heard some elements about what makes Persona Persona, and they differ from game to game. But it has a very mm. similar sort of a, um, a, a vibe and some some shared mechanics, I suppose. But but each time does change things up with a fresh story and I, I guess fresh characters as well. Because mm. this is a standalone game for me is brilliant. I don't need to know what other personas have been. No, is it set in a school? Uh, yes, you're a student. Okay. Do you shoot yourself in the head? No. Okay. I seem to recall one of the personas you entered the whatever underworld sub thing by shooting yourself in the head. But yeah, broadly speaking, they're set in schools. Um, and there's there's kind of is is there kind of like some sort of social sub game going there's, on in the background? There's very much a a time management element to mm-hmm. this game. So. Um, as each day starts, um, you automatically go to school. I don't think it gives you much chance to do anything else. Uh, at school, it may throw you into a lesson where you get picked on and have to answer a multiple choice question. Mm-hmm. Um, after school, depending on story and other choices, it may fast track you somewhere or it'll let you then spend the rest of the sort of late afternoon, evening and night doing what it is that you want to do. Um, and generally that involves going around the you fast travel when you've been somewhere to all the different locations, to stores to buy things, to sell things, to an arcade to play some games, you go to a restaurant and do a big fat burger challenge. Uh, and then there's all the people who who occupy this world. And they're the people whose lives become very much linked with yours. And these range from uh, obviously a lot of people at school, classmates, uh, people around the, uh, the the local town itself, uh, the the nurse, for example, you you, you work with her, and she, you you gain more bond with these people. And at, at first, you don't quite know where that's going to go, but sure enough, these I think these parts of the formula is what's shared and what's been uh, crafted or, or improved, hopefully, maybe refined over time. Um. But I, I kind of wanted to, what, 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 with your blessing, I don't want to spoil anything, obviously. But this is, this is, this has been out for a while now. I kind of want to just sort of explain some of the, just the hierarchical concepts of this game, and if any of it's, and it's none of it's spoiling. It's, 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 it's what the game is essentially. Please do, yeah, but, go ahead. But if any of this sounds appealing in any way, knock yourself out. So hmm. there's kind of a couple of levels of game of game in there. The, 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 the it, it does one of those. It does that great Assassin's Creed thing where like it starts you off and you like. I'm the king of the world and I've got all these abilities and I'm doing stuff. Yeah. Um, but almost immediately you get captured and a lot of the story, almost like in a Sopranos kind of way, is told between the interrogator and the main protagonist. Yeah. And then as he's explaining what's going on, you then go into, you're then playing that out. And it's a, it's a nice way from a story beat point of view to pull you out of what's going on as like a a bookend maybe of this little bit of a tale. Now we're going to talk about something else. Um, the, the the concept of, of who you are and where you are. Uh, you're yeah, you're a school kid. I can never quite tell ages. Uh, one thing I can tell you in Japan is they go to school on Saturdays. That's that's bonkers. That's bonkers. But you know. If it, it works for them, because there's there's some smart cookies coming out of Japan, I tell you. That's true. Um, and so this, I guess, you're a high school kid. Wherever you you come from, you um you, you stopped a woman. There's some quite adult themes in this. I think you stopped a woman getting raped or kidnapped or something like that. And it turns out the guy that you pushed over and, and accidentally hurt very small way was like some big person. So you've you you have had to move out of town and go and stay with this guy who's a friend of the family yeah. who runs. You're on, uh, you're on the shit list now, aren't you? 
you're on the shit list and yeah. the guy who you're staying with reminds you that you're shit every single fucking day and it's something like you've i think you've got a criminal record and it's a very it's, and at that age as well and at school it's an incredibly taboo thing to have a criminal mm. record and people yeah. are, oh, oh that's the new kid i hear he's a psychopath and stuff like that and it's very yeah. very emo with that because that certainly mm. isn't the character who you're playing it was it was very unfortunate what happened to me it was it was certainly unjust and 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 dealing with unjust people is very much the core of success in persona 5 here mm. Because it, it turns out very quickly once once you've got to school that not everything is right and and you as a person have kind of exploded with a persona uh, and a, you I guess as a person your persona comes alive almost like in a hero's kind of way when something just so it, it, so explosive happens in your life and such an emotional explosion that this persona will come from you and then all of a sudden you're part of this crew yeah. and what this crew do is while they're also going to school and doing their stuff and worried about boys and worried about girls and social etiquette, they're also, at night, donning um, a completely different attire and going into a third world, which is like a, is, is where the combat all lives. Yeah. Uh, the, the metaverse, uh, the palaces, and, and these sort of things. And, and when, you're, when you're in that, that's where all your combat and your gameplay sort of happens there. The way you get there is, is, as a team, they decide that somebody is a bad person. This person is doing something very wrong, and it's very apparent at the start of the game who it is at, at the school who's blatantly terrible, terrible, terrible person. The idea is that these guys want to go into their palace and steal their heart. And what the palace is, it is that person's interpretation of what they psychopaths think that life is in their heads. Yeah, And it's a very like an ex extreme version of that person and com completely psych uh, psychotic so in order to in order to steal their heart you need to infiltrate their palace and that's where you're level to level going through i'm guessing randomly generated um areas um exploring and combat and looting happens to find a, a, a safe room which you can then fast travel to so the idea is that you kind of go as far as you can into the palace until you think we need to get back so we're running low on items and then maybe two days later you'll try again start mm. deeper in continue to go when you reach the what you consider to be where the the, the treasure is going to be their heart you need to then go back to the real world and send a calling card to that evil person it, it's enough for them to get a shock that something might happen that in their mind palace the treasure is finally accessible and able for you to go and get and that and sometimes this is where they they force time management into this because they're like well we've got to get this done because we're going to get expelled in a week and a half shit um so do you spend your time constantly nailing yourself against that gameplay or do you think well it's not going to kill me surely to take a night off doing that spend some time with two of my party members in the normal world go for drinks go with something to eat do some training get bring these bonds to cl uh, closer together because as those bonds go up everyone just gets on better because there's 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 synergy of mechanics over there that 25 hours into it i'm sat next to the wife and it just it just threw something at me i went oh <laughs> fuck that changes things that does it's all coming together um like said, and that was like at the 20 hour point and i'm i'm pushing the 30 hour point now um i love the loop of it i love the loop of it i love small things like if you have books in your possession Every day you go to school on the train, if it turns out that there's a seat and you sit down, you get to read a bit of your book yeah. to put some of your stats up. And there's so many little things that gives you opportunity to put some of these stats up. And it's it's just it's just sublime. Sublime. Oh, gosh. And it, it's very much that game that I'm thinking about as well. Oh, it's always good when that happens. Oh, mate, I miss that. Yeah. Um, the music, I think, is phenomenal. Um, I think it must be divisive because the wife hates it. <laughs> is it is it J pop? Yes, yes, uh, not, through yeah. and through. Like the the battle uh, the, the battle score, for example, I love it, and I think is it fires synapses that go, yeah, I've also beat that, and I've leveled up, and I've got some money. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's great. Um, when it when it comes to the actual combat, and you're going through the palace, you will see um enemies walking around on a path and you can hide there are the prompts there for you to hide behind a wall until they get close enough and you can ambush them or they'll ambush you and that all dictates then 
I know, turn order when you get into and you get into combat. But when you're in, and again, you'll see one enemy in the palace. But when you jump them, it's it could be three things of the same, like three uniques. And combat starts. You have you have melee. You have a range attack. You have uh, items, and then you have your persona attack, which is uh, your your, your magic, if you like, and that uses either your, uh, your HP or some of your, man, your mana points or some of your health, depending on what it does. Um, everyone's persona's got, I think, to start off with maybe two attacks each. As they level up, they get to learn more. What's cool is the main character is a bit different because he can change personas. Everybody else has their persona that sticks with them. This guy can change them. And the way that you gather more personas is during combat, if I think if you get your character into a down state, it goes to a hold-up mode where everyone just fucking gets up there with a gun and it's incredible and stylish. Mm-hmm. And it gives you an option to either um, you can sac- you can let them go, you can just kill them, you could tell them you want an item or you want some money or you could like give me your power. And if mm-hmm. if you're high enough level or they make you go through some dialogue first to see if you're worthy enough, yeah. they'll give themselves to you as a persona. And then you go like, oh, I've got a new one. Okay, it's a higher level than the other one, but the other one's got attacks that I like. So how do I how do I balance that out? I'll tell you how you balance it out. You take them to a prison and you put two of them that you, that you want. You put them in a bag. You cut the heads off with guillotines, and they get formed into a new persona. <laughs> Fucking hell, Barmy. But, and that's what I realized is based on all of not just based on the two personas that are getting put together, also based on all of the individuals I have uh, friendship levels with all reflect death the moon light something else something else so having those relationships with them also Mm. benefits this what comes in oh it's just it's just there's just so much going on and i i I can't get enough of it can't get enough of it i don't know if i'm going to finish it because i've got a pc now and and people are talking about hundreds of hours no brother you've got to you've got to finish it for for god's sake we we as a as a pair of people over the history of Midlife Gamer Podcasts, we have been downright shit when it comes to JRPGs. Me, predominantly. So I'm counting on you to to carry carry the torch. Shit, I've got Persona 4 Golden on my Vita. I bought it for the Vita. I've not even switched it on. I've got it. I've still in, it's still in the box. It was a good idea at the time. <laughs> I just thought what I could do is I could download on this computer the um, the streaming gig have the PlayStation turned on downstairs, uh, dual shot four into my computer, and I can play it that way. How does that work? Um, in the same way that you can stream. So you open, there's an app. You download the app. It knows what your PlayStation is, and it streams it to your screen. Oh, that's amazing. Do that. I'll, I'll do do that. Do do that. Make that happen. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds like a good thing to do. Oh, I think either way, I may have to go and drop on the uh, on the soundtrack. Yeah, sure. Why not? Do I it. I wrote down a bunch of stuff, but you know I, mean? I think I've spoken far too much about it. Again, there's so much, and I'll probably continue to learn things. And I think you're right. I think I should probably um, endeavor because I am enjoying it. And you can play it for a couple of. You can, you can play it for an hour, yeah. or you can play it for a couple of hours. Yeah. Or, or you can, can play. Just keep or, going. or you can go. Oh, look! It's four in the morning. What's mm. happened to the evening? <laughs> Listen, gone gone are the days of us trying to break our balls to get through as many games as possible so we can have something to talk about. Listen, we got we got enough time between shows right now that you could probably finish Persona 4 if I give you enough time. <laughs> so do it. Do it, mate. If you're enjoying it, carry on playing it. And it's it's you know, it's great to hear that you are that you're having so much fun with it. Because that's what that's what a good game is all about. It gets you thinking about it, gets you jazzed for it, and you're there, you're at work, or you're on the way home, and you're going, oh, first thing I'm going to do after I've eaten and banged the wife is then I'm going to walk the dog, then I'm going to play Persona 5. <laughs> yes, it's, it's very much my after work, as I work from home as well, so I'll, I'll go down, I'll bang it on, get the fire going, and I'll have about an hour on it before the wife gets home, and then she'll sit down next to me and do her decompression on her phone, and then I get about two and a half hours, and eventually she goes like, "You need to turn this down now." So then the headphones go in, so she hasn't got to listen to the same fucking music. Yeah, I can get about three hours on the school night, I reckon, if I'm if I'm smart with it. No, oh, that's good, mate. That's good. She done. Uh, she done any Reiki on your PS4? No. Just, just curious. How's how's that all going anyway? It's going. Is it? She's 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 booked in to do her level two. Yeah. 
What, what's what's the difference between level one and level two? I, I assume you become more attuned. Yeah, you can charge more per hour for not touching someone. Perfect. <laughs> Love it. On that note, we'll take a short break. Um, we, we'll leave you with some chip tunage. Uh, this one, Trevor, is for you, wherever you are, whatever you may be doing. Um, I'm sure you're adventuring across the wasteland and... Um, yeah, is uh, is a bit of uh, Fallout Four music for you. We're back. Yes, we are all uh, watered and, uh, and and what have you. So, Matthew, I guess it's worth us coming back. We I like to revisit from time to time, um, not not with any kind of anticipation or expectation. Just curious, uh, your 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 small cardboard collection uh, has it seen any action whatsoever? Uh, I put it in a different drawer this week. Oh, well, that's fine. Yeah. Not, not, not in the third drawer. I hope. No, no, no. <laughs> nothing, nothing in there gets sleeved. <laughs> Just lubed. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Okay, so, um, so on the anal- analog front, for me, it's it's still pretty much all things uh, Magic: The Gathering. I've um, so you know, I had my cube. I had a pauper cube, and I've been working on my second cube now for some time, the peasant cube, um, and that's almost complete. Uh, I went to uh, I went to pre-release for the latest set um, a few weeks ago at the local game store. Uh, very enjoyable, had a fabulous time. I went on the casual day because because what happens is you normally you'll have you'll have the Friday night for the for the crazy hardcore people. Then you'll have Saturday, which is kind of the casual day, where it's all relaxed. Nobody's 
nobody's fighting to win or nobody's playing hardcore. And then they have a bit more of a like a semi-hardcore tournament on a Sunday. But I, I managed to get some time to go on the Saturday. So I went along and I paid, paid my money, got my, um, get my free release pack, which has got um six booster packs in it and uh, a bunch of cards specific to because because this sets all around guilds which is kind of like amalgams of two different colors um i i picked a guild and i said right okay i'm gonna sit down you open all the packs you build yourself a deck and then you you play swiss tournament style so i played four 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 games and i won two of them which for me if i win a game i'm happy i am i'm, I'm really happy for nothing else other than it's a great social experience. I, I really do enjoy sitting and playing this game with other people. Do you do you get a good varied demographic? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, young and old. Uh, boys and girls. You know. Probably um, all, all, all the colours of the uh, of the LBT GQQ barbecue spectrum. Um, yeah, it's all going on, mate. All inclusive, as you like to as you like to say. But I don't care, mate. I don't care where you stick it, as long as we're uh, as long as we're as long as we're playing a good uh, a good game of magic. So I'm saying, buddy. Um, someone else. Oh, okay. So if I was to say to you, I've picked up and I've been playing an old board game. So if I say to you an old board game, what can't, what what springs to mind? Oh, I don't know, Hero Quest. Okay, bit older than that. Oh, I don't know, um, Kaplunk. Bit older than that. Does it involve dice? Yes. Trivial Pursuit. Just back a little further. <laughs> I don't know, backgammon. Yeah, let's hey! go back four thousand years. <laughs> Four thousand, you know, four thousand year old game backgammon, backgammon is, and um, I remember playing it as a child. Are we and... still waiting for the sequel? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll be on Kickstarter at some point, I'm sure. Um, yeah, I remember, I remember, I recall playing it as a child, and just remembering it was, it was very intriguing, and it was probably one of the first kind of board games that. Outside of your standard staples like your monopolies and your Cluedos, etc., it was the first one where, you know, you've seen you've seen backgammon, the, the the board and the layout and and the pieces. It's a very abstract game. There is no there's no real theme to it. Um, but it was I recall it being very easy to learn, and there was there was good level of strategy to it. And yeah, lo and behold, still 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 the same game. There's been no rules revisions. There's no expansions, you know, to, to my knowledge. Uh, I know there's like rules variances around the uh, around the globe, and you know there's various other things you can do. But a good old standard standard basic game of backgammon is it's it it's a wonderful it's a wonderful thing. Is it enjoyable now as it was then? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and and it, it and it is it's definitely one of those games because I I struggle really hard with my good lady. She she pushes back hard against any kind of attempt for me to engage her in a board game not because she doesn't like games but she's of the belief that her brain has turned to mush over the years and she struggles to comprehend things dude she's a very switched on lady yeah <laughs> but when it when it come when it, if you try and sit her down and explain a load of rules to her she just she just phases out and goes i'm not interested yeah so i've, I've been trying different angles and different ways and means yeah sadly uh, you know, I can't get a, I can't get a play of Magic: The Gathering, but uh, I thought oh, I'm gonna try with uh, backgammon, and and guess what? We had, we had, we had a good time, because it is, it is, a, it is a simple game. You roll your dice, you move your counters around the board. You, we've each got a destination to get them to. There are choices that 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 you have to make, whether you're going to play safe or leave pieces vulnerable. It's, it's, it's a, it's a very, very enjoyable thing. So I picked up a. Um, because we'll be going away once or twice this year, and I, I always like to, I want to have a game to take on holiday with us. I think it's important, uh, you know, f first to be able to have that opportunity and go. Do you know what? Yeah, we've had some nice drinks. We've had a good meal. The bar's a bit shit because the band's awful. Yeah, and there's only so many times I can listen to Boney M, sung badly. So let's 
let's get some drinks let's go back up to the room let's sit on the balcony we'll take in the sights and the sounds from afar and we'll we'll just do we'll have some fun together yeah now, i know the kind of fun you'd be having back right. coming over the balcony but it doesn't all have to be the sloppy mucky rudeness all right that, don't get me wrong it's a good thing but yeah i like I like to I like to enjoy other things in life as well. All right, I like Persona Five. I'm not just a complete fucking deviant. It's not all about the knobbing, mate. Just remember that. So yeah, so I bought a travel. I bought a nice travel set off Amazon, but like 20, 20, 25 quid. Really nice. I remember they uh, they came out with those travel versions of some of the classics, didn't they? For for airplane use, I think. Yeah. No, no I'm not talking like a little magnetic thing that's about the size of a wallet that flips open this is a proper uh i guess it's made of a a, a fabric a material uh there's suede on it um it roll it rolls up and you know forms its own little soft tube um it, it works really well to, to the point where i don't need to buy a i guess what you would say is a a full home version of backgammon because i've got everything i need within this uh within this this little roll-up travel version Nice. So yeah, so um, yeah, get get your backgammon on. And if you want to learn backgammon, well, there's countless apps, countless apps which you can get for free. Yeah, so if you're thinking, well, it sounds all right, but I don't know if it's my kind of thing. Well, you can find out for yourself, boys and girls. I'm looking at you, Matthew. All right, all right. One thing at a time. Oh, no, no, I know, I know. You got to get your peggle on. Don't, don't, don't do it, because you'll just go to peggle, and then you you'll be there forever. You'll you'll be regressing back to the the Matthew that I knew. 10 years ago when I'd be rocking up and you'd be there going, Oh, I'm just, I'm just trying to get this one perfect level where I think you would, it was just the one ball, wasn't it? You had one ball and you had to just fire everything off with this one ball and you, you were just stuck on it for ages. I'm, I'm, I'm triggering, you know, I know. I, I, I can't. I'm bringing I, back memories that you'd, you'd long locked away. I can't because I remember playing it on um, on the Xbox and it wasn't the same because you can't cheat by literally putting your cursor at the exact pixel that you wanted to go to. But now I'm thinking about how much fun it was doing that, finding that perfect pixel to find a ball at. <laughs> Fucking hellfire, Darren. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so aside from that, not not a lot else to report really. Um, as I say, just get just getting on with life. Um, focusing on my work, which I'm enjoying at the moment. Which is the first time I've been able to say that in a good while. Um, and well, just, I just, just enjoying life. I did a bit of successful DIY over the festive period. Did you change the light bulb? No, even be- even better than that. Go on. Uh, I uh, I changed the toilet seat. <laughs> what? Hang on. Firstly. Why did you have to change your toilet seat? Did you break it, or did you like do a massive, dirty process on it that went that just went too far? You thought, no, this has got to go. Well, it's full of mechanical pieces, isn't it? So it will it will have a shelf life. I don't think I don't think I was being particularly uh, rough in it in my treatment of it. Okay. Uh, but screw fix is around the corner. And screw fix is very much my friend. But I made a fatal error. Um, so what I do differently when it comes to building a PC, couldn't tell you. What would do differently when it comes to buying a new toilet seat? Invest a bit of money in your toilet seat, yeah? That £15 one may have the same connectors. It'd be £10 cheaper, but I guarantee the amount of time you are spent sat on it, the extra tenner for the wooden thing would have been worth its weight in gold. Mm. Uh, you've probably got a dodgy MDF one like I have. Yeah. If you buy cheap, you buy twice, my friend. That's the saying. It's called a throne for a reason. Invest in mm. it. Yes. Yes. i tell you what. I tell you, one of the best things I got for Christmas, yeah, and and again, I think this is um, this is an indication that that getting old isn't all as bad as you think it is, okay? Because what I'm finding is when I'm getting older, I care less about certain things, and I don't worry so much, and I've accrued wisdom over the years. I feel like a wise man in many respects, but in other respects, I'm still learning, and I'm cool with that. I'm relaxed in my own skin. Good. And then I got a pair of slippers for Christmas. And I'm not talking any old shit. These are proper M&S suede fur lined. Oh, mate, they're the most amazing. 
I, I go everywhere with them. Anywhere I go, they go with me. Nice. Shit, I've driven, I've driven home up the M1 in these slippers. They were I, so good. I said, I, I said to the good lady, I said, I'm putting my shoes on. I'm keeping these slippers on. They're just, they're just fantastic. Well, I'm, I've got a very first world problem at the moment where I've got three pairs of slippers that all have different functions. Oh, okay. I'm so interested. I've got the outside slippers, which have got the firm back and the solid underfoot. Yeah. So that's for that's for taking the bins out and getting some wood from the shed. Okay. Uh, there's my go-to indoor slippers, which are the big tiger feet, uh, just for the downstairs. That's neat. Um, only because. <laughs> Oh shit! That was very, very slow on the uptake there, Darren. But <laughs> puntastic. <laughs> oh no! Still got it. Um, yeah, the, my, my indoor ones that the dog will also like have a bit of fun with as well. And then I've got the ones that Damster got me for my birthday, and they're like Ugg boots, but slippers right. with a zip, a zip all the foot. They're like ankle high. Oh, they're a thing of beauty. I only wear them in the bedroom because I don't want Louis to get to know that there's an even nicer pair. Does Louis do sexy things with them? No, he doesn't do sexy he things. He just bitey bite things. Oh, he just likes to... He, he knows the daddy DNA on that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, got to get me some daddy DNA. <laughs> it's probably why he likes the wife so much. <laughs> oh, my God. <sighs> so, slippers are a thing. When you get to an age, slippers are a thing. Don't... don't uh, you know, I'm talking to the listeners now. Don't don't fear the slippers. They're they're an amazing they're an amazing thing. Is that a Blue Oyster Cult song? A B side. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's B side to Don't Fear the Reaper. Ah, <laughs> oh, okay. That slippers conversation resolved. I'm glad I'm glad you brought that up because that was very much on my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Right then, let's uh, let, let's talk about um, let's talk about what we're going to be doing. Have we got any have we got any plans for the next um, few weeks, months? I don't know. I don't know how long before we record again. Oof, uh, jolly good question. No, I've got a couple of things coming up this year. I've got a couple of gigs uh, off to see mm. Muse at some point. Oh, nice. And um, ba- ba- the Beach Boys. Oh, nice, mm. nice. Where you, see, where, you see, where you seeing them at? Um, South Coast, begins with an S. Um, s- s- yeah, Southampton. Which it, and isn't Southampton? Okay. Somewhere. Uh, yeah, all my other S's are on the East Coast, I think. Skegness, Scunthorpe. Um, oh, it'll come to us at some point. Okay, never mind. Uh, I'm, I'm going away. I'm going away in March for a, for a nice long weekend. Um, got a lodge booked in the Peak District. Mm. It's got a hot tub. Mm-mm. So I've always wanted to do a bit of hot tubbing. Mm. So I'm very, very, very much looking forward to that. And don't um, fear the rain in a hot tub. The rain's nice. No, well, this one's it's got a little, um, I guess, a little uh, gazebo over the top, a wooden gazebo. So. I I hear you, but I don't I don't want rain on me. No, I want all that moisture from down below. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, bubbling up. Yeah, bubbling <laughs> up from underneath. Uh, what else have we got? We've got um. Oh yes, yeah, so I want to. So m- my mum got me a really cool Christmas present this year, where it was for, it was for me and the good lady. Um, so we've got a uh, we got a voucher. It's like one of these Virgin Experience days, but we got a voucher to the Forty Towers dining experience in London. So this is just people playing the characters, but they're actually serving you a meal and they're doing all the Basil and the Sybil and the Manuel kind of stuff. So I'm really, really, really looking forward to that. Is that in March? Uh, I don't. No, no, no. That that's at some point later in the year. We're going to tie it in with something else, which is kind of bubbling under at the moment. Which I'm not going to talk about until it's confirmed. But it will, it will surprise you and the listeners very much if it comes off. And you'd be saying, "I never had you down as wanting to do that." Hmm. That's all I'm going to say. Mm. Going to leave. Going to leave you hanging. 
I'm going to mull over that. Yeah, you do. You you mull good, my friend. Mm. Yeah, I want to see him. Show me your mull face. Mm. Oh, yes. Yeah, oh, mm. pon- pondering. Oh, I can see the cogs turning. Yeah. Mm. Beautiful. All right. Domestics, is it oh, time? Go on, it probably is. Uh, well, mm. I, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. You had a birthday party, and we haven't even talked about it. I had a birthday party, and it was fucking amazing. It was. You, you came from far and wide. Yes, down to the, uh, the, the, the stronghold of Farringdon. It's all right. We, we braved the snow and the ice and the you, horrendous conditions. You guys are fucking legends coming down in that weather, I'll tell thee. Nah, we didn't care, mate. We just wanted to, we just wanted to, um, we wanted to be there. We wanted to give you some love. It's a lot of fun seeing. It's like my wedding again, seeing all these people from different elements and different aspects yeah. of my life all under one roof. Yeah, that uh, that hog roast was okay. Well, again, Pretty just decent. like just like my wedding day, I totally didn't have any of it. Uh, oh, the crackling! Oh, the crackling was to die for, mate. Well, I'll well, probably I'll probably die for you on my on 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 behalf uh, with the amount I consumed. But no, it was a, it was a tip top evening, my friend. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm glad you claim. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, so before we jump to domestics, I've got to thank you. I've got to thank you. Um, a, a gent called uh, Mark Bennett. He reached out to me and he wanted us or me, I guess, to send a big thank you out to James Watley and Facebook group who has been administering a Beat Saber um, competition league type mm. gig. Uh, the, the that um that rhythm action lightsabery PS4 VR title. Yeah, 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 yeah. Looks so, looks like a hell of a lot of fun. It does look good, doesn't it? Mm. Um. So yeah, they 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 pick a song, they pick a difficulty, and everyone posts screenshots of their of their scores, and and James was going to collate it all and announce winners each week. Uh, bless his cotton socks for doing that. Yeah. All while getting myself a sexy new job this week, I understand from social media. Well, I was yeah, I was thinking to myself, wouldn't it be? What kind of a world must it be where you get a new job and then you have to, you're asked by outlets to give a, um, what's it called, a quote? Yeah, sandbite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, for me, it'd be like, well, it's a good job I got one because I was almost skint. The guy's done good. So uh, congratulations, James, on your uh, on your new position. Uh, just remember us when you're uh, when you're flying around the world on your private jets, and uh, you know you're getting a blowjob in the back of the uh, of the stretch limo. Obviously, Matt will be there because he'll be giving you the blowjob. Wow. So think think of me. Think think of think of your uncle just sat here, wanking off over magic cards, <laughs> miss, missing his tanks. Yeah. But, <sighs> All right then, domestics. Um, the website is midlifegamer.net. Mm. We just spoke about Facebook. There's a very active and very interesting Facebook group. Go and search for Midlife Gamer. There is um, th- th- there is a hoop or two you need to jump through. And if someone puts, I can't be asked to get the answer, we can't be asked to click the accept button. Do one. <laughs> and we do, and we do that purely because we we kind of we want we want people who listen to the podcast to be able to come we we we're, we're not looking for you know we're not looking for shit posters and meme meme lords or whatever they call themselves you know we want people to come and engage in positive conversation and you know all the all the, all the good stuff which we've been you know extolling over the years you know br- bring bring some value if you're going to come into the group bring bring value yeah, and if if you are going to fuck off on a on like being being an idiot, do feel free to let everyone know before you go because that turns into a hell of an interesting post. <laughs> oh, that was awesome, mate. That was awesome. But um, but no, it was good. Hey, coming back to the website, I understand uh, we're hiring. Is that right? Are we hiring? Uh, or, or, we're, or we're on the lookout. We're look, we're on the lookout for content creators. I, I saw an org chart. Oh, did you? I've we're, not. I've not it was seen. At the top. Well, there's only one space, but there's two names. Yeah. Okay. I feel I feel an, a, a nasty accident coming on. Yeah. I'm going to sharpen up my Visio skills, shouldn't I? <laughs> and let's get this org chart started right. Yeah. There's two boxes at the top. Yeah. <laughs> it'd be like it'd be like a towering inferno. Like one one of us on the left is obviously going to be. Oh, I'm not having that. Can't have them on the left. So 
I'll I'll be on I'll be on the right, but my box will be a little bit higher just, just by the... just by a pixel or two. Well, in which case, I'm having an extra dotted line coming into me. <laughs> All right. You could have as many dotted lines coming into you as you want, mate. You leave me. You leave me far out on the side. Yeah. I only come along and talk shit every couple of months. All right. You guys do all the rest, and you know, we talk about the uh, the great job that the uh, the community managers do. You know, I, I'm 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 just showboating now. I've, I'm 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 in semi retirement to all intents and purposes. <laughs> You know, but I'm I'm enjoying life, and that's you know I think we lose sight of that. We get we get wrapped up in social media and and bickering and and bollocks and banter and you know you know Brexit's having a uh, you know having an impact on on the on the country. You know that's a big elephant in the room, which you know obviously we're not a political show, but you know Brexit is is a thing that's looming, and we are we're we're rapidly approaching a cl- a cliff, and we still don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> You know, so uh, it's going to be it's going to be an interesting uh, month, I would say. Absolutely. Who who knows? I, next time we're recording, I might be working off a generator or something because there'll be <laughs> rolling power cuts and all that kinds of shit. Uh, um, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, tw- Twitter and general individual online handle isms. Uh, mm. The main Twitter um, account is at Midlife Gamer Net. I'm on the Mantis Matt and your uncle underscore Fister. Um, I was thinking, yes. I was thinking about this. Have you ever had to? Have you ever felt embarrassed telling people your online identity ID, Uncle Fister? Mm, I don't care anymore. Are we, Honestly, are, we, are we going back to giving, getting old, and giving less fucks? The 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 fucks I give are, are diminishing day day by day, and it's great. It's it's so <laughs> liberating. You know, I, I really, I really feel for millennials because they get, you know, they, they they're clutching pearls at everything. Oh, it needs to be inclusive. It needs to be the. Oh, I'm I'm offended because of that. No, no, you're not. No, you're not. You you you're choosing you're choosing to take a stance, and you're you're going way over the top about it. Stick stick twenty years on your life, and you won't be giving a shit about vegan sausage rolls. All right, <laughs> you won't give a flying fuck, just like me. All right, do yourself a favour. You know, it's uh, you'll live longer. Trust me. The blood pressure can't be good for you, you poor millennials. Bless them. Well, I'll tell you what, millennials might have. Go on. They might have an iTunes account. Yes. And, you... Spot- and Spotify, and 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 it's all about the gram nowadays, uh, by all accounts. Yeah, as a unit of measurement. No, the gram. Oh, you see, you're not down with the kids like me, are you? You see, I might appear to be old and fuddy duddy, but I'm. I've got finger on the pulse. Yeah, when I talk about the gram, it's Instagram, my friend. Oh, but they it's... they call it the gram. Oh. Jesus. Yeah, because obviously it's it's a few less syllables they have to worry their little clerk pearl clutching mitts over <laughs> um but if you do have spotify it's not spotify what's it called itunes go leave yeah. us a sexy review go search a store for midlife gamer uh, put some sexy words in and we'll um we'll be forever in your debt uh and you get to have your name read out by me and mm. uh to be fair the way this month is going that might be the best you're gonna get for a while <laughs> oh is that right oh okay i'll smell a wager <laughs> <laughs> okay my friend well it's been it's been amazing catching up as as always i do uh i, I, I do miss you and it, it's it's good to see that you're uh you're looking well uh what is that you're wearing anyway is that some kind of uh it look it looks like the um the the fur co- fur cuffed jacket that um that somebody wears on the cover of Brokeback Mountain. Don't know why I thought of that but um it, it looks fine mate you 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 get your cowboy bumming on yeah it's dressing gown okay cool, cool. yeah cool glad we established that you can't see the assless chaps but this is a dressing gown <laughs> that you can't see <laughs> boy <laughs> <laughs> right then let's get out of here boys and girls ladies and gentlemen have yourselves a great gaming couple of weeks be wonderful to each other whatever you do go balls deep as is the custom um or uh Oh, no, millennials will be clutching pearls around that. Oh, what about the ladies? I don't know. Go go wide. <laughs> go wide, girls. Go wide or go home. Yeah, go wide or go home. 
and uh, just don't get sand in it. Right. <laughs> right, we're gonna we're gonna bugger off. Um, just go 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 and live your lives. Go and enjoy yourselves. Love each other. And join us next time when we bring you another exciting episode of the Midlife Gamer Podcast. Say au revoir or some ting, Matthew. See you later. So, I've uh, I fired up I fired up my uh, my email client on my laptop, and this is this is the only email client that I I still have the um, the podcast inbox live and active, and it's often interesting to see uh, what emails because obviously we 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 we've got no spam filters or or, or anything. Um, it's just, it just sits here and it collects, um, it collects stuff from all over the world. Uh, and occasionally we may get an email, um, on, you know, to do with the show. Um, I'm, I'm just having a, a quick look now. Oh God. There's, and, and what happens is sometimes you'll get, someone's account will have been hacked so you you may get an email from somebody and i'm not going to mention any names here but there's some names i recognize here and uh, it just says uh, and i click on it and it just says podcast and then there's a web link <laughs> nah i ain't i ain't uh i ain't reading that but we got an email on the uh, 18th of january and i thought I wonder if Matthew's been actively using this. And I think you know where I'm going with this, Matthew, already. I think you know, because this, this is a widely publicised uh, thing that's been happening, but I'm not sure if everyone is aware of it. But uh, let's, uh, let, let's read the body of this email, and you might get an understanding of why I thought you have something to do with this. So, the subject line is, High perved. I recorded you masturbating. I have cop- I have captured podcast.mp4. Okay. So, in the body text, in capitals, this is not a joke. I am dead serious. All right. And it says, hi, perv. The last time you finished a pornographic website with teens, you downloaded and installed software I developed. My program has turned on your camera and recorded the process of your masturbation. My software has also downloaded all your email contact lists and as and a list of your friends on Facebook. I have both the podcast MP4 with your masturbation as well as a file with all your contacts on my hard drive. You are very perverted. If you want me to delete both files and keep the secret, you must send me Bitcoin payments. I give you 72 hours for payments. If you don't know how to send bitcoins, visit Google. Send two thousand US dollars to this Bitcoin address immediately. Uh, it's giving me a bunch of numbers and shit. Do not try to cheat me. As soon as you open this email, I will know you opened it. I don't give a shit. See, uh, <laughs> this Bitcoin address is linked to you only, so I will know if you send the correct amount. When you pay in full, I remove the files and deactivate my program. If you don't send the payments. I will send your masturbation video to, in capitals, all your friends and associates from your contact list I have hacked. Here are the payment details again, just in, you know, obviously just in case. Um, okay. Oh, no, is there's more. You can visit police, but nobody will help you. I know what I am doing. I don't live in your country and I know how to stay anonymous. Don't try to deceive me. I will know it immediately. My spyware is recording all the websites you visit and all the keys you press. If you do, I will send this ugly recording to everyone you know, including your family. (gasps) Don't cheat me. Don't forget the shame. And if you ignore this message, your life will be ruined. I am waiting for your Bitcoin payments. If you need more time to buy, send (laughs) blah, blah, blah. Um, If you need more time to buy... Send 0.567542 Bitcoin. Open your notepad and write 48 hour, please, PLZ. I will consider giving you another 48 hours before I release the vid. (laughs) Signed, Anonymous Hacker. Anonymous Hacker, wow. But, Matthew. What were we saying, the 18th? Yeah, but we had a follow-up on the 21st. So that was a Friday. Yeah. So then on the month. 
So on the Monday, yeah, we get another email. <sighs> Subject line: This is my last warning. Podcast at midlifegamer.net. Subject: uh, Body text. You have the last chance to save your social life. I am not kidding. <laughs> I give you the last 72 hours to make the payment before I send a video with your masturbation to all your friends and associates. The last time you visited an erotic website with young teens, you downloaded and installed the software I developed. Yeah, 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 yeah. You've told us all this before. Um, oh, so he's just a bit of copy pasta there. <laughs> oh, that's boring. Well, that's been... So he gave me three days. Is there anything yeah. else? No. I don't know whether to reply. Well, maybe he sent it out and it, it just wasn't that impressive. Did well, you get a copy? Well, no, because I, I was going to ask him if he's uh, if he's got hold of your old um, sex tape. Because if anyone's going to have it, it's going to be this asshole, isn't it? Well, he's, yeah, well, the hacker. Yeah, the hacker. Jesus, I mean, that would be worth hackers. it. I mean, how, how many Bitcoin does he want? I can probably find some down my ass in between the sofa cushions. No, Two thousand dollars worth. Bitcoin, not shit coin, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Dropping shit coins on your new bog seat, like a lord. Oh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Do, do, I mean, who who would actually, who would actually respond to that? I know I'm clean. I've not watched porn in ages, ages. I don't watch teen porn. I'm too old for that. Mm. What, what sort of what sort of porn? What what's your go to, my friend? It's always been, it's always been amateur. I like yeah. I like the idea of just seeing normal people doing it because they enjoy it. Hmm. Oh, and uh, squirting! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! That came out of nowhere. <laughs> Very often it does. Yeah. So, oh, what's your favourite sex? You know, what what's your favourite sexual activity? Oh yeah, I like uh, I, I like the missionary position. Yeah, and maybe a hand job. Oh, and fisting. <laughs> Ooh, loves me a bit of fisting, I do. Double fisting if I'm really lucky. 